try to see things from their point of view, their fucked up little point of view, and try to be like, um, you know, basically try to show it in a light to where they're not doing anything wrong, or at least they don't think so, like they really think they're doing the right thing, and what else are they supposed to do, and trying to basically just show them in a good light, and be like, oh, even though they're like, basically torturing these people, like, it's still the best thing they can do, like, that would have pissed me off, that would have pissed me off, but no, the movie is not like that, the movie is pretty cut and dry, like I said, this is more of like a teenager movie, so, it's just so funny because they're like, they just make it, it's just very satire and ridiculous, and like, um, and, what was I talking about? Anyways, it's like, this this young dude, he's like walking in the, there's like, you know, he's walking in the, in the crazy house, like down the hall or whatever, and then fucking uh, Bilbo comes with all his, like, stooges, and uh, you kind of, like I said, you just kind of, this is a movie you just kind of have to see, because it's like, it's just, like I said, it's visual and everything. But they're all very exaggerated, you know, and he's just like, Oh, I heard you have a new a new thing you want to do. Like, uh, we're so excited. We're so excited. We really want to see. Like, can we come watch? Can we come watch, like, um, what you're going to do? And I'm just like, okay, let's get on with this gang rape. What the fuck is going on? Like, let's get, just get to it, motherfucker. I'm like, is it going to be, what, is it going to be, like, the electricity? Is it gonna be fucking like, um, you know, what what is it gonna be? Is it gonna be like, are we gonna see some exposed brain? Or are we gonna see <laughs> somebody get wired up like a fucking Christmas tree? Like, what is this gonna be? But, um, but no, um, and the movie kind of like censors itself too. You don't see a lot, but it's just funny because it's like, you know, they're all hyped they're all excited they're like oh yeah we're so happy we're so happy this is so great la 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 mushroom kingdom land mushroom kingdom i meant to say like candy land why did i say that <laughs> candy land candy land and then it, like there's like a hard cut and you just see like them like <laughs> strapping this girl's like ankles and wrists up and they're doing it so tight like like um it's just like kind of like three days grace or something like that or all you just see is like bam 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 and it's like <laughs> this shit is so tight i feel like it's like they're like tourniqueting her you know but it's supposed to be like you know sharp or whatever and then uh but then they don't even fucking follow follow through with the whole torture scene see this is not saw this is not to that level they, they still, like, they want you to think they're hardcore, but then they kind of fuck, fucking pull back a little bit, you know? Actually, a lot of it, they pull back. They're like, okay, okay, it's fine. You know, we're Hot Topic. We're not beyond Hot Topic or whatever. So, so they put this, like, rag on her face, but they make it look like a dog muzzle. It's like this metal, like, cage with, like, a metal thing here and a metal thing going like that, like an X. And it has, like, a cloth in it. But it's basically just a fucking... It's basically just a chloroform rag, but they just try to make it seem more creepy by adding some, like, some metal. See, that's a- that, let that be a lesson to stylists out there. That you can take anything and make it look creepier if you just add some, like, metal X's or metal crosses, okay? Uh, let this be a lesson. Like, isn't there a Ramstein um, album cover? Where it's like, oh, and also a scorpion, I think it's like, the scorpions were the first ones to do it and Ramstein copied them, or some stupid shit like that, I can't remember. But basically they just had forks and spoons and shit like that on their faces, but it was like bent in such a way to where it makes it look like they're basically like in a facial like saw trap or some shit like that. Yeah, looked up, looked that up, I don't know. But anyways, so... They knock the bitch out, and then they take her into the room, and there's, like, a hundred people watching. And then, um, he, like, lobotomizes her with, like, the whole, like, chisel to the head thing. And, like, um, and that comes back later at the end, which I think is actually one of the best parts in the movie. So, basically, I can't remember how the next thing happens, but 
I think, I can't remember, I think maybe a second girl gets killed or some shit like that. And, um, then Adeline goes to talk to, like, oh, Adeline is a cop, by the way, or, like, a detective or some shit. I kind of feel like he's the same, um, uh, like, he's the same character from Sleepy Hollow, who was also a fucking cop. But maybe he, like, uh, because what is this movie is, like, two years later, made two years later, right? So, like, um, or came out two years later, I should say, not made, whatever. And so I feel like it's kind of like the same dude, like, came from <laughs> New England to London and kind of just, like, got a new accent and a new, like, uh, identity or some shit like that. But anyways, um, where was I? Uh, he goes and talks to, like, this fucking, I don't even know who he is. He's some dude in, like, some politician or something or some dude. I don't know if he's, like, the head of all the cops or some shit. I don't know. But, uh... Then, oh, and the other confusing thing is when they go to the morgue, the second time they go to the morgue, like, they, uh, there's, like, this young guy working there, he's, like, the apprentice, the apprentice to the morgue master, and I was, like, I swear to god, he, is, is that supposed to be, like, the lobotomizer? Because he looks just like him, but I'm, like, no, that can't be him, because, like, and, okay, first of all, the, the guy that was the apprentice in the morgue, like, he was so fucked up and horrified by, like, this corpse being, like, cut open and shit like that. And he, like, turned around. He was, like, puking. I don't know if he was puking, but he was, like, gagging. And then he, like, passed out on the floor. It was really silly. It was really funny. I'm like, is, is this a Tim Burton movie? I don't think it is, but it has that same, like, sense of humor, you know? Where everyone's just kind of over the top and ridiculous. And, um... Um... But I'm like, no, that can't be him, because why would he, why would, like, a top lobotomizer surgeon, like, top of the field, with, like, a hundred people watching him, why would he be an apprentice to the morgue guy, like, and why would he be that sensitive? Like, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. So, I think they're different people, but that makes three guys that look exactly the fucking same. So, anyways, then, um... Yeah, Adeline's talking to the fucking, like, the top dude, the head guy. He has these big, like, white mutton chops type of thing. And he has this, like, um, pen that's, like, the Illuminati pen, you know, and shit like that. Kind of like what Sam Adams had in, uh, Hose of Liberty. And, um, and you know what's funny is when the credits came and it said, like, this is based on, like, a an Alan Moore graphic novel or some shit. I told my dad this, I was like, man, the second I saw that little Illuminati sign, um, I should have fucking known it was Alan Moore. Because I remember when I was like, what, 12 or whatever, and I saw The Extraordinary Gentleman for the first time, which I told you is my third favorite movie of all time, and when I was a little preteen and I saw, like, when they went down into the underground worm <laughs> room, why can't I say that word? and they opened the door and there was like Illuminati stuff on the door. I was like, oh my god! Oh my god, I know that! I know that! I felt so smart and so special and uh, like, because they don't say it in the movie, but there's like, it's there, you know? But now I come to realize that Alan Moore kind of, I feel like he puts the Illuminati in a lot of his stuff, which is cool because I'm down. I'm always down, but I'm just like, oh, it's not that special anymore. But, um, anyways. Uh, anyway, and you know what else? I haven't read the graphic novel, I haven't read the graphic novel of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and I don't intend to, because I don't think I would like it. Like, I remember when everyone was into Watchmen, everyone was so into Watchmen, and I was just, I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I've never even seen the movie, but I've just heard so much about it, and it just doesn't sound like the type of thing I'd be into. And then V for Vendetta is like, I feel like that, I feel the same way about that movie as I feel about Forrest Gump, but like, more extreme, like, Forrest Gump I think is a really good movie, like, one of the best made movies I've ever seen, but it's just, it's fucking depressing, and I, I'm like, people are, are like, yeah, you won't watch Forrest Gump, but I just can't be like, yeah, I guess, you know, and V for Vendetta is even more depressed, that's one of the, I mean, I feel like it is a really good movie with a good story, and I love the whole part of like, 
how like he's called V because his door was number five and it's like Roman numeral five is a V, you know, like uh, when that part in the movie came up, I was like, oh shit, man, you know, I loved little shit like that that like comes back around, but that movie's just fucking depressing. I can't get into it. And, uh, and I'm like, I like... Like, this is a whole digression, but I love the fact that Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen is seen as a shitty movie because to me, the, all the things people say that makes it shitty, to me, is good about it. It's lighthearted, it's fun, a lot of shit doesn't even make fucking sense. I've seen it so many times now, and I, I saw it when I was 12, I didn't see it again until I was like in my 20s, and I was like, still didn't make any sense, and I watched it a bunch of times since then. And it still doesn't make any sense, some parts, like the whole fucking part where they're in, uh, Vienna or whatever. I'm just like, I don't even fucking know what's going on. But that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Like, I, I honestly fucking love that movie. I will, I have to do a separate video all about that movie and why it means, it, it means a lot to me because I saw it when I was 12 and just, it, 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 um, it just, is a symbol of like some important shit to me, you know? But I'll get into that in another video. So, um, what was I talking about? Um, right, so this guy is in the Illuminati, this like white mutton chop guy, and he's basically telling Adeline, like, fuck off, and I don't want to help you, and I don't want to, I'm not interested, just cover up the murders, I don't even care. And Adeline's like, oh, I want help, or some, something, I can't remember. He wants something, and the dude won't give it to him. And then, he just had to leave. And, um, anyways, I think somebody, oh, and also, okay, so everybody, every time Jack the Ripper kills one of these, uh, hookers, he leaves a thing of grapes under their body, which, like, um, I'm like, okay, who came up with that shit? <laughs> but, okay, fine. So... So yeah, apparently when he, um, when he kills them, he like, so he sends out this dude, this coachman, and the, I swear to God, the coachman is this, speaking of the lead of swearing a gentleman, the coachman is the same guy, I'm, I'm like 90 something percent sure that this is the same dude who played Dr. Jekyll in that movie. Um, and he was also in another movie I've seen recently, but that was a newer movie. But anyways, um... So he's like, you know, this is just a sad little man, and, uh, he, um, he, he goes out, he picks up these hookers, and he takes them in the carriage, and then he, he gives them, like, this fucking, a, a laudanum drink, so they're all high, and then, um, he gives them grapes, and apparently grapes are, like, this huge fucking delicacy that, like, everyone goes fucking crazy for. And they're just like, oh my god, I mean, I, I'm sure they're starving, so any food is good, but it's just like, okay, grapes, like, I mean, I guess, yeah, back in, in those days, you couldn't just go out and get whatever produce, so, you know, I get it, I get it, it's fine, but I'm just like, okay, yeah, okay, but anyways, so, <laughs> especially the, 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 this one, I think she's like the third one to get killed or something, she was my favorite, the one they called like Black Annie or some shit like that, or Dark Annie, some shit like that. She was my favorite one, cause she she's just, I don't know something about her. She just uh, she resonated with me. But she when they gave her the grapes, she was the worst one, cause she was like she was like my little three year old niece. Like she was trying to grab them all in one hand, and just eat them all at once. At least the first lady who got killed, or the first one after the chubby one, who they said wasn't Jack the Ripper. I don't fucking I'm confused by that. But anyways, um. The next lady after that, she had the decency, you know, she was just standing up, she was eating them one at a time, enjoying them, talking about Cleopatra and shit, you know, like, um, you know, she wasn't greedy about it, she was just enjoying her grapes, you know, but anyways, whatever, so he sticks a little grape stem under the body, and then, um, that's like a clue or whatever, and then, I can't remember what happens next, Adeline was in the bath, the fucking bath scene, and he has this whole ritual he does with getting high, where he's just like, um, like, I can't remember, first of all, he's already smoking a cigarette, it's just like so, so many substances at once, he's already smoking a cigarette, and then he, um, you know, he pours absinthe, then he like, puts the, the, the sugar cube above the absinthe, then he like, 
puts like a couple drops of laudanum that say clearly on the bottle like poison you know i i mean i guess it's poison yeah you can you can definitely overdo it but would it say poison on there really or would it be like tincture or something like that i don't know but um uh anyways whatever it's just funny it's like funny it's this whole ritual and it's just like <laughs> it's just like a whole thing but um i want to you know what somebody should do like a self-care meme of that like part that'd be hilarious oh like the cat's cleaning himself on my lap and then he has his foot behind his head like how they do are you seeing this look 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 at the paw oh <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so where was I? He pours the, um, the drops of laudanum on the, which, uh, do you really need abs, it, do you really need absence and laudanum at the same time? I guess they're not the same. I guess they're not, because what is that? That's like a hallucinogen and laudanum's like a downer, so okay, I guess it's fine, whatever. I'm just saying, well, the mixing of the substances. But anyways, whatever. And then he, like, sets the drink on fire, he has this, this whole flambe thing. And then it like melts the sugar cube. It's really cool. It's all really fun and music video-y. Very MTV-ish. And uh... And then... Yeah, the sugar cube melts, he puts in the drink, and then he dreams about another person getting killed. And then um... I can't remember what happens next. Then there's this whole part where like um... The uh... I think it's like the lobotomizer. He joins the masons and they go into like their secret cavern underground and he's like wearing the um he's like wearing like a nightgown and this guy's like stabbing him in the chest just a little bit not like a lot of it and he's like blindfolded and he's like i take the oath of the masons and blah blah, blah. and then they show jack the ripper like in his place and i thought at first they were trying to tell you that adeline is um the jack the ripper like i thought they were gonna try and do like kind of like a twilight zone like type of shit where it was like oh the reason he sees all these people in his mind getting killed is because he's actually doing it like kind of like a wolfman type of deal or something it's like oh yeah he gets high and then he goes out and he fucking kills somebody um then he comes back and like cleans up and shit and then he's like becomes sober and he's like oh i don't know what i did but anyways it's not like that at all i mean that would be kind of lame anyway because it's like and I would kind of have a hard time believing it, because it's like, okay, like, you're gonna put yourself back in the exact same position. Like, it would be one thing if you, like, you're, like, high and you're, like, stumbling all around the house and shit, and you just wake up, like, in some rando position that you didn't even know how you got there. Then it could be like, okay, yeah, maybe I did do some murders. But it's like, if you're laying in the bed or in the bathtub or some shit and try not to have a Jim Morrison moment, like, and then you, like, you're not gonna fall asleep or, you know, go into a trance or whatever, go put on your clothes, go out, kill some people, come back, wash up, get, take clothes back off, and put everything back the way it was, all nice, and get back in the bath, just in time to sober up and be like, huh, what did I do? I just had a crazy dream. Or whatever. You know, that shit is a little hard to believe. So, I'm glad they didn't go with that, but that's just kind of what I thought they were hinting at for a second. Because, um, when Jack the Ripper gets his drink he does it exactly the same way Adeline does it he like he does like the sugar and you know all that bullshit um but actually I think now that I think about it I don't think he was drinking that drink himself I think he was making the drink for the hookers yeah anyways whatever so then fucking J uh, Dr. Jekyll is like saying I don't want to do this anymore I feel really bad about like making them die like luring these girls in to die and shit and Jack the Ripper's like standing behind him and he's like, he just gives, gives some weird fucking line that's kind of just nebulous and it's like, what are you talking about? It's like a song lyric where it's like, you could spend like days trying to figure out what it means, but it like, maybe it doesn't even mean anything, you know, it's just fucking, you never know, it might be written by some fucking one of those Swedish dudes that wrote all the fucking Britney Spears songs or whatever. But basically, I think the gist of what he was saying, what he was trying to mean, was I think basically he was saying like oh uh, you know when you let go of everything like you let go of all your morals and you let go of everything to the point where you're you're just like fuck 
everybody but me, or even fuck myself, who cares, I don't care about anything at all, to the point where you're willing to commit murder and shit, then you know who you really are, he's, he's just like, oh, we're, cause Dr. Jekyll's like, where are we, and he, he means that, like, what's our, I don't know, like, where are we, like, in plans, or, like, not literally, you know, but, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like when, when you're like in a relationship or something and you're like, uh, where are we with this? You know? So he says that.